U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is continuing his support for Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido. Now, Pompeo traveled to the Colombian border city of Cucuta over the weekend, where thousands of refugees have passed over the last few months. RT Sarah Montez Oca joins me with the details. Sarah, we're still seeing refugees. Obviously, this crisis is far from over. What happened this weekend? Well, Scotty, Pompeo said that there's no other issue or crisis currently taking place in South America that even compares to the situation in Venezuela. Pompeo also called on Maduro to open the border to allow the humanitarian aid that's been sitting on that border for a while to enter the country. But Maduro continues to refuse it in fear that the U.S. will militarily intervene. Now, these comments come as the U.S. continues to pressure elected President Nicolas Maduro to step down. Now, during his visit to Colombia, Pompeo criticized Cuba and Russia for their continued support for the Venezuelan government. And he echoed President Trump's previous warnings that all options remain on the table. We've made clear that all options are on the table. And you watch. You watch the political and dip diplomatic noose tighten around Maduro's neck. We will begin to do the same thing. The Cubans must understand, too, that there will be a cost associated with their continued support of Nicolas Maduro. We're going to have that same conversation with the Russians as well. Pompeo also criticized China, accusing them of prolonging the Venezuelan crisis by not condemning Maduro's government. Beijing fired back, and on Monday, Foreign Ministry spokesman Liu Kong accused the U.S. of treating Latin American like it's their own backyard, quote, to pressure, threaten, and even subvert political power in other countries at every turn. Meanwhile, opposition leader Juan Guaido continues to travel the country, making appearances at rallies and visiting hometowns. Now, this is all as Guaido told reporters that Maduro's government would be making a huge mistake should they detain him. I think it would be a great error of the regime. It would be a great blunder to arrest me, especially with what this part of the movement represents at this stage. That is to say, to capture who is leading the process at this important stage for the country, who also has international recognition, who has an alternative plan for the country, would only further deepen the crisis and the consequences would undoubtedly be suffered first by the regime. And in a surprising twist, Venezuela's former intelligence chief was arrested on Friday in Madrid. Major General Hugo Carvajal, an ally of former President Hugo Chavez, denounced President Maduro and fled by boat to the Dominican Republic earlier this year. The Spanish police arrested the defector under a U.S. drug warrant and he's now fighting extradition. Now, according to New York prosecutors, Carvajal allegedly helped to coordinate a shipment of approximately 12,300 pounds of cocaine to Mexico while serving as Venezuela's spy chief. And in 2014, he was arrested in Aruba while serving as Venezuela's consul. But Dutch authorities refused to extradite him to the U.S. Now, when he returned home to Venezuela, Maduro, Maduro welcomed him as a hero. So it came as a surprise when back in February, Carvajal released a video on social media where he announced his support for opposition leader Juan Guaido. And just a few weeks ago, just last week, he took to Twitter and wrote, I have no doubt Maduro will leave by decision of the armed national force. An unnamed U.S. administration official told Reuters he is, I would dare to say, the most knowledgeable person to now be outside of Venezuela and be willing and able to cooperate with a treasure trove of information. He will clearly be cooperating with us. He's expressed that publicly. Now, Carvajal is expected to appear before Spain's high court on Saturday, where well, they will review his extradition request. And while the U.S. government is working on obtaining this key intelligence asset, but an independent media outlet, The Gray Zone Project, reports that the Center for Strategic International Studies, a high-level think tank in Washington, D.C., held private, off-the-record meetings to discuss this U.S. military option against Venezuela. So, Scotty, it will be interesting to see really what unfolds in the next few weeks, since it seems that so far Guaido has failed to win over the military support that the Trump administration had hoped he would gain. And how Washington proceeds from here remains to be seen. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.